such an important part of the squash swing and something that can be overlooked really because it's sort of after impact. We can sometimes forget about it and it is the most, one of the most important parts of the swing. It gives you three things in my opinion. It gives you that extra power on the shot because you're getting right the way through the ball. I was once taught, I once had a boxing lesson and I was taught not to hit the front of the pad. I was, hit to hit, I was taught to hit through the back of the pad because that's where you get that extra power. And I think it's a great lesson we can transfer into squash. So we're not looking to hit the ball, we're looking to hit through the ball as if it wasn't there. And that's gonna give us that extra power and momentum through the shot because we're hitting through the ball. So that's the first thing, that extra power. Secondly, the follow through is just gonna give us that extra accuracy. If I'm follow through on a straight drive, my follow through is gonna hone in on my target on the, on the front wall where I want the ball to bounce. If it's a drop shot, I'm getting through at a slightly different angle. A boast, I'm getting through that way. A cross court like that. All of those shots have in common an extension of the follow through through the elbow, through the wrist and through the fingers to give me that extra extension. I'm not stopping there because that's going to limit the power, but also it's going to limit the accuracy. I'm getting right the way through the ball and the racket head, you see the tip of that racket head is following the ball. So I'm almost tracking the ball in whatever shot I want to play. If I'm hitting a straight drive and my racket is going there, there's going to be a disconnect between where you want the ball to go and where it's actually going to end up. Okay, lastly, if you get the follow through right, not only have you got that power and you've got that accuracy, but the recoil of that follow through will naturally pull you back to the middle of the court. And that's where we all know is where we want to be. We're going to look at Russ's follow through. And the first one we spoke about is space, keeping that back leg to the tee. Second one we spoke about on the quick ones, punching that shorter swing into space. And now can we sort of combine the two and really be consistent with our follow through and look to track the ball and vary the heights and speeds of what shot we're going to play so that Russ can control the tee and can control the match. And then your attacking volley can maybe be a bit more of a, a variation and attacking weapon rather than your go-to every single shot. Yep. Okay, so when you think about the follow through, show me how you would actually follow through on your volley. Show me, wait, ghost one for me. So you see how your follow through loops round your body there. I want you to think about that follow through sort of tracking the shot a bit like a bow and arrow. So that arrow is pointing exactly in the direction of the shot that you want to play. So you see how your shoulders really opened out to the front wall there. You keep them more towards the corner. So slightly more side on. Okay. So even if you step with your right foot, for example, you can take, so a volley drive, you'd go through there, a volley drop, You'd, you'd still follow through, but just a little bit lower. And if you controlled the ball, you really exaggerated it up as a bit of a, ch a chip. So see whether you can vary the height and the pace of your shots while staying in complete control of that follow through, okay? That's nice. Shot. So I've never seen you hit a volley like that before, Russ. Normally you hack the living daylights out of the ball, but you're in complete control of that shot, okay? So try another high one. That's it, sorry, better feed this time. There you go. That's it. So now hit one hard. Well done. So work the follow through to the corner. Good, a lot better. Volley drop. Oh, got a bit of work to do on that one in the next video, I think. Here we go, volley drop again. Is that a volley drop? Okay, come back to drive, work from the tee. Remember to keep linking your footwork into the shot. That's better. So you see how the follow through and the footwork combine. If the two are separate, you're not gonna get that. What you wanna do is have that snowball, that flow from one shot to the next. So if you get that timing of the footwork and your follow through, not only do you get the accuracy, but you finish up in that start position, ready for the next ball, completely balanced, okay? That's it, so mix your heights, work the follow through. That's better. Just rush that one ever so slightly and the follow through, just turn. So try and keep it towards that corner. That's better. That's 
it. Try one with your left foot now. That's better. So what we're finding as well is that you can mix what foot you decide to take it at. Maybe when the ball's out in front of you, you can maybe step with your left foot. And when it's probably the midline and beyond, maybe your right foot is a little bit of a rule of thumb. It's not always as simple as that, but it might be that when you're going out in front, you step there. And if it's level or behind, you might go with that right leg. So whichever leg's closest, basically, for speed. Lucky, go meet it out in front. Really good. Control this one. Nice, up high. Well done. Hit this one harder. Well done. Try that faster one. And lucky, stay in control of the follow through. Really good. So your best shots are those ones where you stay in control of that follow through throughout the shot and then that links into your footwork, bringing you back to the tee.